Hey, this is Coach Miller here with B2B Lax, and I want to show you the six factors why Syracuse was able to take down Johns Hopkins this past Saturday night in lacrosse. This is a matchup between two top 10 teams. Hopkins was coming off a big win over Virginia the week prior. Syracuse was 5-2 and two coming into this game with two overtime losses to Army in Maryland. So it was big time. Hopkins had one loss. They were 5-1. and one. Their only loss was to Denver. And in that game, they were up three goals with like limited amount of time left. But Denver was able to tie it up and then win that game in overtime. This game was played down in Charlotte where they had other games there as well. It was wet. So people were kind of slipping around there on the field. The announcers were talking about that quite a bit. The game was very physical. There was hits all over the place. The rest like pretty much let them play. But let's dive into... The six factors, starting with factor number one, Joey Spinella. All right, so Joey Spinella is the nation's leading goal scorer. And we'll see right here, he's being guarded by Bo Suluk. I think that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, Bo's a grad student, and he's a first-team All-American. These guys were going at it during this game. So we'll have a pick game here just at X. It allows Joey to get that step. So Hopkins got to do a better job to organize those picks, and it gives him a little bit of a window for his first goal. All right, so next up, coming out of the second half here, Syracuse gets on the board first, and they end up scoring three goals to open up the second half. So we'll see here. We see uh, Joey there on the crease. Got some six-on-six -six offense. I looked through this a couple of times. Hopkins is playing man. And right about here, the announcers all game long were talking about Joey's high lacrosse IQ and just finding those seams. And 77, Owen Hilt had a big game as well. You'll see he's just a good feeder and just a good seam pass there for a goal. Gets Syracuse on the board to start the second half. Ties the ball game up at 4-4. So Joey does a really good job by catching the pass, goes, fakes the goalie, then finishes down low, stays out of the crease. So a lot of components there that uh, Paul Carcaterra, the one of the announcers, was talking about during this play. So next up here, let's take a look at Joey's feeding ability. So here we got some settled offense again, just working the ball around. So you'll see here, I mean, that feed right there is probably, it's definitely probably 20 yards, I would say. And he gets it right in that window. Catch and finish. Goal. That's his feeding ability. So that feed was to Christian Mule, who had a huge game as well. That was his third goal of the game. He's going to be one of the factors I'm going to talk about as well. So next up, I want to show you something here that happened in the second quarter. So you're going to see Scott Smith, who's a defenseman for Hopkins, and Joey kind of go at it a little bit. Interesting note here, the announcers mentioned this, both coaches decided not to have instant replay during this game. So here we'll see Joey trying to get a spot, but he, Hopkins does a great job doubling it. And it kind of looks like Joey just falls, but... During the process, he loses his stick, and Smith tries to, you know, kicks his stick, and Joey isn't having it, so they're getting a little pushing there, going at it. Each of them only end up getting like a 30-second penalty, which is one of those scenarios that might have been different if they re reviewed it, but so be it. But I just wanted to point this out to show you the competitor that Joey is and the fight that he has. All right, the second reason why Syracuse was able to take down Hopkins was because of Jake Stevens. Jake Stevens did not play in the Army game, and he's a big factor. He does a ton of stuff. The announcers are talking about he'll be a professional for a long time. He plays the wing on faceoffs. He scores goals. He makes plays all over the field. So let's take a look at a couple clips and see what he did. So let's look at this first here in full motion. Catches, stays out of the crease with the fake. So he just has a hard cut here. With his stick up, stays out of the crease, gets a stick fake. Both Joey and Stevens do a good job with that. So you can say Steen out of the crease, tiptoeing with the fake. Big time goal by Jake there. He had a big second half.
Hey, quick interruption. If you want a free three-part training series on all the mechanics of shooting, simply click the link right below in the description of this video. I got my good friend Scott Yurick to walk you through his shooting system. Scott was an All-American at Georgetown University. He played on Team USA. He is currently the head coach at Georgetown Prep in Bethesda, Maryland. Prep is always a top high school team in the country, and they have a ton of current alumni playing college lacrosse. Scott really knows the art of shooting, so go ahead and check it out. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so here we got a scenario. It's 12-10. Hopkins just scored. And, well, actually, you will see here we got a face-off for Syracuse, and I'm going to talk about the Syracuse face-off guy in a minute. But look at this answer that they have here. So scrapping, and then we see Jay come through with the ball. Big time goal, puts him up three. I mean, just look at that ground ball. So Stevens played his high school lacrosse at Culver Academy. We play Culver every year at Gonzaga. We're actually going to play them uh, next week. So they're a powerhouse. They have a ton of good players. There's two guys from Culver on the Syracuse roster. But you can see here that Jake just gets a tough ground ball, answers the call, and scores off the faceoff to stop any momentum from that Hopkins goal. I want to show you this next goal here because there was a period in this game where there was four goals scored in like less than two minutes. So this is the next goal. Just an awesome answer by Hopkins here. Look at that ground ball by number six. Number six, he's a freshman. His name is Dylan Bauer, and he just picks this ball up at full speed, has, you know, head up, makes a great pass, boom, doorstep, 13-11. This is a great stretch during this game. So shortly thereafter, right during this stretch, Syracuse's man up, so we'll keep an eye on our boy Jake. Boom. Just that's what you call a stick up, time and room shot. Right here, he's got a stick up. Catches it, one. Catches it kind of into a crow hop. Boom, for a good overhand shot. And this is a good goalie. I mean, that ball is like moving. This goalie is a was a four year starter at Cornell, and he came over to do his grad year at Hopkins. Uh, he was there with Milliman, the head coach of Hopkins, when Milliman was at Cornell. So the third reason why Syracuse was able to take down Hopkins was because of Mason Kahn. So here's another guy, Mason, who came from Tufts. He's doing his grad year at Syracuse. He went in there. He's doing a year. He's a captain at Tufts. He played hockey and lacrosse. He was the national faceoff player of the year in 2023. He was an All-American, and he also played hockey. He played his high school at Torrey Pines for Coach John Ozissi, who I played with at Tufts. So small little world there. So a big part of this game was how dominant Syracuse was at the faceoff act. They had a ton more possessions than Hopkins did. Con was 18 for 25 at the faceoff X. So I wanted to point out this faceoff right here. So it's 14, 13. It was 14 to 11. Hopkins rattles off two and we got a big time faceoff here. And Con was coming up big all game. He wins it to himself and they get possession. So that's a big time win right there. We can see, we'll zoom in a little bit. Wins it to himself, secures the ball, and then puts Syracuse in decent position. All right, I mentioned him before, but the fourth reason why Syracuse is able to take down Hopkins is because of number two, Christian Moulet, and he had a game. And it all started here with the first goal of the game with a nice behind-the-back catch and finish. So boom, boom. I mean, look at that. So we can kind of just see his caginess there playing on the, on the crease. Kind of looks like he's going up, comes back down, catch, finish, gets him on the board. So let's take a look here at the start of the second half. So Syracuse had just scored to open things up. This is what I was talking about. They went on a three-goal run to open up the second half. Boom, Moulet, catch, finish. All right, so let's take a look here. So Syracuse scored the first goal to open up the second half, and this is going to be the second one. So we have a pass up top. So the guy who has the ball right now is Roa. And Roa, the announcer is saying all day long, 
is one of the best two-hand middies there is in college lacrosse. And he played his high school lacrosse at St. John's College, and they're in our league at Gonzaga, so we play them all the time. I saw him as a high school player. His senior year, they had one of the best teams I've ever seen in a high school program. So anyway, um, look at this feed from Roa to Moulet. Boom, catch, finish, shoot. Gets that goal, two-goal run to start the second quarter. So here we have another look at it. Catch, finish. All right, so Christian had three goals in this game, but I want to show a big-time hit he had here in the fourth quarter. So Syracuse has the ball. They turn it over. Let's take a look. Hopkins is trying to clear it, and look at this hit. Just boom. No penalty. Ball goes flying. We'll look at that in uh, full speed. I mean, this is a big-time hit. There was hits all over the field in this game. It was a very physical game. But this is, I mean, they're going to be talking about this this hit for sure in the um, film session for Syracuse when they go over this game probably today. Like I said, it was a really physical game. There was an 11 penalties in this game, probably about even, like half and half for Hopkins and Syracuse. There probably could have been more. I mean, they were, it was physical. They were, I mean, the rest were letting them play. It was fun to watch. So there was a lot of transfers on the field here. Some of them, a lot of grad students, but Christian was a transfer from Lehigh. That's where he played his undergrad. So the fifth reason why Syracuse is able to take down Hopkins was because of the Syracuse ride. And all season long, Hopkins was very successful in the ride. They were last week against UVA. In fact, they were over 90% clearing percentage going into the game. But in this game, they were only 65% clearing percentage. All right, so the announcers point this out. At times during this game, Syracuse would be in a soft ride, but then apply a lot of pressure, and I think it threw Hopkins off a little bit. So here's an example. So there was a shot that went out of bounds. I think Hopkins was closest to the ball, so it was their possession, and they're trying to clear it. So right there, like it's a soft ride, but then here comes the pressure, as you can see, and they're just eating up the clock. So they're eating up the clock, and as you're going to see here, there's going to be a delay violation because Hopkins doesn't get over in the required time, the 20 seconds. And you can see once that time X comes, it's very motivating to get those balls back for the Syracuse. And that happened all day for the Syracuse ride, and it was very effective against Hopkins. And then so the ensuing play after that ride, after that delay, was the goal that we went over earlier by Christian, as you can see right here. So as, uh, which is always the case in lacrosse, failed clears often lead to goals. And the sixth reason why Syracuse is able to take down Hopkins was because of sick plays. And a prime example of this is the goal that was scored at the end of the third quarter. Let's take a look. So here we have a situation where there's 20 seconds left. Michael Leo is going to catch this ball and catapult it without even looking at the net. So here we have a good angle. You can see seven here. Catching, not even looking. He's literally looking up the field behind the back. Boom, gets his body into it. The announcers are going crazy with how much pace he was able to generate on that ball. All right, and last clip. So there's a flag down. It's basically like a free play, and we can kind of just see Spinella finding his boy Roa for a doorstep goal there, catch and finish. I knew they had a free play there because they were going to be man up and they were able to score, go up 9-8. All right, so there you have it. There were the six reasons why Syracuse is able to take down Hopkins. The announcers were talking about this. It was all over inside lacrosse as well. It was Gary Gates' first win over a top five program. So it got Syracuse on the board there. All right, so this video, I just wanted to focus on Syracuse and the things that they did to win the game, but Hopkins made a ton of plays as well. They have some big-time offensive weapons, so I'll highlight those in another future video. But real quick, guys, if you want that shooting series to become a better shooter to score some more goals for yourself, I got some free training for you. Just go ahead, click that link in the description of this video. I'll talk to you all soon in an upcoming video. Coach Miller.